Okay, so a little presentation about myself. Most of you guys actually know me. Okay. Some of you, some of you, yeah. That is what I'm the girl that sits behind the secretary and the cleaning lady upstairs. So I'm Cecilia. I founded a cafe. I'm also the founder of my mom. Thank you to Barcelona. And Chavi uh, asked me, So, uh, I need to just be clear about making stuff. I'm going to share with you guys a little bit about my experience, you know, why I really believe in the sport of my maker movement and why we really should all make stuff. Kind of like no, Maria, no, no, what about it there? Yeah? That's kind of how I'm not. Um, I'm not from here, I'm not Spanish, but that's my real name, Cecilia. It's my real name, I was born as a Cecilia. Uh, I was born in Hong Kong, far, far, far away, Came about 12 years ago to Barcelona. I'm American. Uh, afterwards, I went to the U.S. to study, but I've been here for 12 years. Now, when I came to Barcelona, I didn't speak Spanish. We didn't even speak Catalan. So, you know, I came here from love. My husband now, or then, um, brought me here, and I just stayed here. But it was a struggle because I didn't know anyone. I couldn't really uh, practice as an architect. I didn't, couldn't find a job, it was very frustrating. So I thought, wouldn't that be great if we make a home for professionals, where everyone can, it's like a meeting point where people can get together and do stuff together. <laughs> okay, so that was kind of the birth of the idea of Mob Makers Barcelona. Okay, let's talk about a little bit about philosophical stuff, right? A little bit, just bear with me here. Okay. So, let me ask you this question. Can I do something? Got too excited? Stuff. What stuff do we have here? Stuff. Papers, computers, jeans, t-shirts, jackets, pain. How many of us know where our stuff comes from? How do we make our own stuff? T-shirts, no, no, no. How many, how many of us know where our stuff comes from? Ooh, that's a good China. 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 Are you racist? No, I'm um, <laughs> okay. um, So, we don't know where our stuff comes from. We use them every day. We have shoes, pants, you know, whatever. We don't know, we don't know who made our stuff. Why is that important? So, here goes the story. Who made stuff? Yeah, I'm asking. Who made stuff back then? Hmm? No? Everybody. Everybody, but there's a name for it. I'm artisans, yeah. right? Back then, artisans make stuff. What do they make? They make, they make plates, metals, they make carpentry, they make stuff. But, you know, it's stuff that you need. I need a pair of shoes, and I'll make you a pair of shoes, right? That was that period. And then what happened? Industrial revolution comes, then who's making stuff then? Machines. Machines, factories. And what kind of stuff are they making? Machines. Mass production, same car, same color, being produced hundreds of times. Okay, then, then what happened? Who's making stuff here? The Chinese, right? <laughs> Yeah, you think? No, not really. So like, <laughs> high oh, everyone, uh, the, all the making has been sent offshore because it's cheap. Chinese people are cheap, right? Not me. I'm, I'm an exception. But um, have service providers, alternative service providers, no one make anything anymore in developed countries. We're all hiding behind, hide behind our computers and we're doing our work, but we have forgotten that there's all, this whole entire sector in fabrication. Okay, so why is that important? Let's go back. Let's go back. So about education, right? Okay, so here, what kind of what sort of education do we have in pre-industrial times? Hardly. Right? There was no schooling unless you're really well aristocratic families and have a tutor and you know give you all the information you want. But other, other if your dad is a carpenter, most likely you will be a carpenter. 
right? If your dad is a blacksmith, you will be a blacksmith. This is as limited as there is back then. What happened here? We know that, right? All the farmers, they're converting into uh, moving and they have to very uh, teach everyone and the system of education was created. Uh, they made classrooms, they were teaching kids, same thing all over again. Uh, it's like the uh, mass production line. So you have the teacher and the student model. And then what happened in the end? Not in the end though, what happened nowadays? What's going on with education? Yes, but education, formal education, it's still here. So we're still, we're still mass educating children with standardized information, right? Okay, so last comparison, the World War One. Consumer patterns. Who's buying stuff here? And what are they buying? They buy yeah. basic. Basic. basic essentials. They're not going to have 50,000 pair of shoes like Kim Kardashian, right? <laughs> they have that one pair that they wear. And if you have a hole in it, they will make reparations, right? There's no luxury items uh, unless you're the lucky few. Here, we see a, 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 a trend of the middle, middle class growing. People starting to be able, because the production costs have uh, and people can start buying stuff, right? But let's look at the consumer pattern nowadays. What are we buying? We're buying these extremely cheap products that is being made, you know, in China. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but uh, we who make our stuff. We have no idea how the conditions are We have no idea how they're being made. We don't really care. We go off by these five dollar t-shirt, myself included, this is not a criticism, myself included, you buy these five dollar t-shirts, you wear them maybe a couple of times, you have a hole, what do you do? Throw it out. Zero consciousness, consciousness of where they come from, the importance of it, and whatnot. Okay, so that's not good. This is where we are now. So, then we move on, everyone is talking about this third industrial revolution, right? We all know about this poster, right? Comes from before. Here. It was a campaign that was made during the war when all the men went into war and all the women are left behind to do uh, factory work, right? And uh, they did this campaign to, to work. And this campaign worked really well. It increases 40% of the women in the work field. And then this was a cover of Wire magazine that was just a year ago. And obviously, it was inspired by, you know, most of the work here, but there's a couple of differences. What are the differences? The tool and you kind of yes, but what one other difference? Hmm? Glasses. Classic. Classic. Da da. a fashion statement, but <laughs> look at the end of the tool. What is it depic depicting? It's the web, the internet. So there's a huge difference here. Now we are empowered, obviously, by the tools, which is technologies, that is connected in the internet, which is knowledge. And I love this saying. It says, if you can think it, you can build it. It's not so much the fact that we can build anything, it's the fact that there is now a mentality that we can do anything we want. So here's the Breakdown, what's exactly is happening nowadays, right? As we know as we know it, it is instantaneous and it's ubiquitous, right? We go online, we search 0.2 seconds on Google, and information is there. Tutorial is there all the time. I looked up how to build a fusion reactor online the other day. There's a tutorial. You can build it in your kitchen with kitchen supplies. And then you can go to on the radio and buy the rest for you can put yourself a Fusion reactor. Not that I know what that is, but maybe you might tell that I would know. Technology as we know it is cheap and accessible. You guys have been in Bach Cafe, we have a couple of 3D friends here enjoying our week. Um, so we have and uh, here have a couple just you know as a toy. Uh, they cost about two hundred dollars each. 
the 3D scanner structure sensor, which we have it upstairs. Another three hundred dollars. 3D printers nowadays you can probably get ordered online and sent to your house and you can start making stuff, right? Not to mention all the gadgets, gadgets that we have, you know, the laptops, the iPhones, these toys that which most of us have. That's actually really, really cool. Uh, there's a change that the fact that the time to think about something, the prototyping it, is going to be huge. Two weeks, two months, two months, two weeks, two months. Can't remember. Yeah, two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys have a product to present. Well, this guy over here in black, his name is Joe Justice. He's from Seattle. Uh, he created this project called the WikiSpeed. The WikiSpeed. He used the Agile. Who used Agile? You, you. He used Agile, but not on programming. Instead, on um, car building. So in three months, he built his first prototype, functional prototype, that you can actually drive on the street with his friends in his garage with his garage tools. Not bad, not bad, right? Moved on to this next, next iteration. It took him 12 months to, to, to make this, the second one in black. And the third one took him 16 months. But what's really cool is that this version won the X Prize, is currently Cost about twenty thousand um, dollars. Fastest and the lowest emission car possible in the market that you can buy today. And it took him sixteen months to do it. So, we're no longer talking about mass production. Everything is the same, repeated, uh, but uh, various times. This project is from a friend of mine called Jorge Niste. Uh, he's a programmer, she's a fashion designer, it's not stereotyping at all. <laughs> it's a lot of cross disciplinary there. But they created this uh, website, this tool, and this algorithm where they would uh, scan a body and she would create a pattern. So each person would have their own customized clothing based on those patterns and based on the measurements of each person. So, all about crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is an amazing thing. Upstairs we have uh, really an amazing example of Bianca. Mm, I should have shown her. Uh, but anyway, she was she's a programmer actually. She did a 3D blanket algorithm. Really, really amazing. Put it on case. Um, she ended up having two hundred and four thousand dollars in ten days and sold eight hundred blankets. This didn't happen ten years ago. Communication. Um, we all know about social media. This particular campaign is just kind of sad. This kid who's five year old is terminally ill. So his parents, and he told his parents, I want to be that kid, I want me. So his parents, uh, along with uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation, created this hashtag, San Francisco Bad Kid. And that one day, the whole entire city of San Francisco, because of the communication, changed the whole city into Gotham City, and it, for this kid, and it had 545,000 tweets of all the Instagram photos just for that one day. And the last thing I want to, to talk about is the fact that it's changing how we fabricate today. Uh, remember we talked about globalization when we send everything to China and they produce it and then they produce, distribute it and sell it us. Well, now we're actually changing the fact that design anywhere because of the internet we can all share online digitally. Uh, but then we can fabricate locally. Right? So, for example, in the, in the case of fab crafting, um, we can have a designer, in this case, the 360 book from a Japanese designer. He can send out uh, his digital design or a local okay, buy this design, and you can fabricate upstairs in any fab cafe or any uh, similar shop where you can digital fabric and make things locally. Okay. So, what's exactly happening? How about the industrial times, right? There's no education, hardly any. We know that. Uh, money, non existent, right? Technology, also non existent. Communication, there's no even telephone. So, like, all of this is broken back then. But then, uh, we have access to knowledge through universities. But we're talking about, what, three or four years of education here? Funding, you have to ask your mom or your dad, or you can go to the bank. That's that is simple and easy. Technology, only accessible to selected few, like institutions, big companies, and whatnot. Communication, you would have to go to big newspapers and big magazines to have uh, 
a big impact on communication. This is what's actually happening nowadays. We have access to knowledge, thanks to the internet. We have access to funding. If you have a good project, you can use crowdfunding. And you can Technology is low cost, social media is doing itself. So, what's interesting is that actually, for the first time in human history, this is actually pretty amazing. In human history, we have all of this in our, in, within reach. All of these tools, well, there's no limitations. We're not dependent on government, we're not dependent on the church. Long time ago. We're, not have, uh, we're not dependent on banks, we're not dependent on big companies. We can have anything ourselves as an individual. For the first time in history, we have the power. That's actually amazing. The problem is we don't know it. We're like superheroes, but we don't know it. So what needs to happen? We as a society need to start changing our surroundings. First, we need to convert uh, our kids, our children, from passive learners to active doers. So instead of just sitting passively and receiving information, they actually have to actively use their hands and create stuff. Okay? Instead of passive consumers, you make them into active makers. Again, they're going to H and M and bring the you know brainwash shopping stuff random. Wow, why don't you create your own toys? Why don't you create your own you know things? This kid actually, his name is Quinn uh, Etienne. He's 12 years old. Uh, he created a kit, an Arduino, uh, as a robot to play, and he sells this kit to other children to play. He's actually an entrepreneur maker thing. He's 12 years old. Wow, now he's a professor. <coughs> And MIT teaches to adults. So we need to start. Uh, we need to start making, allowing, or shifting all these big institutions, civic centers, libraries, new dead spaces, and corporate communities. Make them usable. Spaces by itself has no meaning. This already the the paradigm before was making local, designing local, making local, right? Globalization, we think locally, but we fabricate it globally. And the last one, shifting towards, is that we can think globally, but then we make locally, which in turn makes it a lot more sustainable. Then we know where our stuff is being made, we know what, how they're being made, we know why they're made. It says that if you have made something yourself, you're actually five times more likely to have to, as five times more valuable for you to keep that thing that you have made yourself. This is actually the fact of Tokyo. Just so. And the last thing is, instead of in the old days where one idea, uh, I guess this was like 100 years, about 50 or 100 years ago, you have one big idea, right? Now, the rate of innovation is so rapid that you have so many ideas all the time. We have been bombarded with ideas all the time. That's great. But ideas like Photoscope, right? Photoscope is a microscope that someone had designed that cost 50 cents to fabricate using a laser pattern. 50 cents. That could be shipped off flat to several countries. You could use for a science experiment elsewhere. Bad. Developed by a student, huh? actually. And this guy who sells 3D uh, uh, e-waste to make his own 3D printers and resell it as a business. And this is not just talk, 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 talk. This is actually happening. Uh, NASA just launched a competition, maybe this was old, maybe a couple months ago. He just launched, they just launched a competition to look, look for innovative ideas from citizens. Not from a research lab that they have created in the house. No, anybody. And they, they just launched this, and so in case it's so this is my perspective. I think we're all superheroes. By day we don't know it. Most of us don't know it yet. But we need to kind of discover it. So imagine if we all have the superpower. And we all have different superpowers. And we all work together. And we all progress together. And we all, you know, 
you know, very quick and rapid, just making stuff nonstop. How we can progress so much faster, so much more collectively. Make stuff. Don't stop. Stop it there. Neither can you. So that's it. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you for very much for coming. <laughs> <laughs> 